let's uh, start our lecture and let's start learning about the cell, the structure and functions of the cell. So to understand the cell again, first of all, we have to look at the types of cells. There are two main types of cells, prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells. First of all, we have to split the cells into the groups. These are the cells seen in all living organisms. Eukaryotic cells have internal membranes that compartmentalize their functions. The basic structural and functional unit of every organism is one of two types of cells, prokaryotic or eukaryotic. So every organism must have the cells in one of these two types, prokaryotic or eukaryotic. Only organisms of domains bacteria and archaea consist of prokaryotic cells. So prokaryotic cells are seen only in the organisms which are belong to one of those two domains, domain archaea or domain bacteria. Protist, fungi, animals, plants, which means domain eukarya have eukaryotic cells. Compare, let's compare the prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. So what does it mean to be prokaryotic or eukaryotic cell? Basic features, so the similarities of prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. First, plasma membrane. Both of them has a plasma membrane, which is cellular membrane, cell membrane. Two, semifluid substance called cytosol and chromosomes, which means DNA that carry genes and ribosomes. So every cell, it doesn't matter prokaryotic or eukaryotic, must have these structures. Plasma membrane, cytosol, chromosomes, which uh, is made up of DNA, and ribosomes. So these structures are exist in any kind of cell, doesn't matter prokaryotic or eukaryotic. Prokaryotic cells are characterized by having no nucleus, so there is no separated nucleus in prokaryotic cells. DNA is unbound region. DNA is in an unbound region, which is called nucleoid. So DNA is not separated from the other parts of the cell. So it's directly present in the cytoplasm, but it's found in a specialized region, and that region is called nucleoid. Again, there is no membrane-bound organelles in the prokaryotic cells cytoplasm bound by the plasma membrane. So there is only one membrane in the prokaryotic cells, which is plasma membrane or cell membrane. Except for that, there is no membrane inside the cell. Here you can see an, a micrograph and its diagram, which shows the structures of prokaryotic cell. As you can see, there is a plasma membrane and there is no other membranes. Uh, there are ribosomes. There is usually a cell wall which covers the plasma membrane. And inside the cell, there is cytoplasm. And DNA is directly found in the cytoplasm. Eukaryotic cells are characterized by having DNA in the nucleus, which is bounded by a double membrane. So the most important difference of eukaryotic cells from the prokaryotic cells is, or the most important uh, feature of the eukaryotic cell is DNA is present in the nucleus, or DNA is separated from the other parts of the cell by a double membrane. Except for this, 
Eukaryotic cells have membrane-bound organelles, which means they have membranes except for cell membrane. They have a cell membrane which separates the cell from outside, from the environment. But in addition to that, eukaryotic cells have membrane-bound structures in the cytoplasm. Cytoplasm in the region between cytoplasm is the region between the plasma membrane and nucleus. So the region between plasma membrane and nucleus is called cytoplasm. Eukaryotic cells are generally much larger than prokaryotic cells. So there is a size difference as well. In this table, you can see comparison of prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. Nucleus is not present in prokaryotes, but it is exist in eukaryotes. Transcription is done in prokaryotes in cytoplasm of prokaryotes, but nucleus of eukaryotes. Translation, which is protein synthesis, is again done in cytoplasm of prokaryotes. It's the same in eukaryotes, cytoplasm. Cell membrane additions, hoponoids, but in eukaryotes, uh, sterols, especially cholesterol. Size, prokaryotic cells are small, but eukaryotic cells are larger. Uh, and internal organization, there are no organelles in the prokaryotes, but eukaryotes contain organelles. Uh, prokaryotes have only one organelle, which is ribosome. Now we will look at these structures one by one. The first one is plasma membrane. The plasma membrane is a selective barrier that allows sufficient passage of oxygen, nutrients, and waste to service the volume of every cell. So plasma membrane is the first part of the cell. In this picture, you can see the plasma membrane. This is an electron micrograph, which is taken by TEM, Transmission Electron Microscope. So if we look at the structure of cell membrane, we see phospholipids, phospholipid double layer, phospholipid bilayer, and proteins embedded to that phospholipid bilayer. Volume and surface is important for cells. Metabolic requirements set upper limits on the size of cells. The surface area to volume ratio of a cell is critical. As a cell increase in, increases in size, its volume grows proportionately more than its surface area. And this triggers cell division. Now we will look at the eukaryotic cell in more details. A panoramic view of eukaryotic cell. An eukaryotic cell has internal membranes that divide a cell into compartments. And we call those compartments the organelles. So organelles are membrane-bound compartments inside the cell. The basic fabric of biological membranes is a double layer of phospholipids and other lipids, especially cholesterol. Plant and animal cells have most of the same organelles. All right. In this picture, you can see an animal cell. This is the plasma membrane. These are ribosomes. This, is, this part is nucleus. And inside the, uh, the parts of nucleus are nuclear envelope, nucleolus, and chromatin. So uh, nucleus is separated by the nuclear envelope, which is a membrane, from the other parts of cytoplasm. And inside the nucleus, there are chromatin and nucleus. What else? Um, 
Another part of the cell we see is mitochondria. Mitochondrion is singular, mitochondria are plural. So there are a lot of mitochondria in a cell. So this is only one of them, mitochondrion. And also another structure, endoplasmic reticulum, which can be seen in two different types, smooth endoplasmic reticulum and rough endoplasmic reticulum. Golgi apparatus is another membrane bound system and lysosomes. Next is peroxisome and centrosome. Another organelle is centrosome. Also, except for these, we see another important structure in the cytoplasm, which is cytoskeleton or skeleton of the cell. Cytoskeleton is made up of microfilaments, intermediate filaments, and microtubules. Out of the cell, there may be some structures like flagellum. This does not exist in all cells. Some of the cells have flagellum. So this is the structure of an animal cells. You have to know the names of every single organelle and we will learn their functions in a few minutes. All right, this is a plant cell. In the plant cell, we can see these similar structures, but also there are some structures that we don't see in the animal cell. The most important thing, the most important difference is presence of chlorophyll. So chlorophylls are the organelles which is found in plants, but not in animal cells. Another difference, plant cells are covered by a cell wall, and they have a central vacuole. Most of them have central vacuole. Except for that, all structures are the same. They have a nucleus, they have chromatin and nucleolus in the nucleus, and Golgi apparatus, endoplasmic reticulum, mitochondria, etc., etc. They have all organelles which is found in the animal cells, except for centrosomes. Organelles. Now start learning the organelles. First organelle is nucleus. The eukaryotic cell's genetic instructions are housed in the nucleus and carried out by ribosomes. The nucleus contains most of the DNA in a eukaryotic cell. Most of the DNA because except for the nucleus, another organelle carries DNA as well. But most of the DNA of an eukaryotic cell is found in nucleus. Ribosomes use the information from DNA to make proteins. So the information about how to make the proteins of cell is written in the DNA and DNA is located in the nucleus. The nucleus contains most of the cell's genes and it is usually the most uh, conspicuous organelle. The nuclear envelope encloses the nucleus and separates the nucleus from the cytoplasm. Nuclear envelope is a double membrane. Each membrane contains a lipid bilayer. All right, in this picture, you can see the nucleus. So this is nucleus. There is a nuclear envelope, which is the membrane, which is double membrane. And on the nuclear envelope, there are some pores. But those pores are actually pore complexes. And there are special proteins which control uh, the entrance and exits of the molecules in and out of the nucleus. What else? In the nucleus, we say there is chromatin and chromatin is the packed 
version of DNA. This is an electron micrograph of the cell, uh, sorry, uh, nucleus, and you can see the nuclear pores in this picture. Pores of nucleus are lined with a structure called pore complex. Pore complex regulates the entry and exit of molecules from the nucleus. The nuclear size of an envelope, the nuclear size of the envelope is lined by nuclear lamina, which is composed of proteins and maintains the shape of nucleus. In the nucleus, DNA is organized into discrete units, which are called chromosomes. So chromatin is the other shape of chromosome and DNA is found as chromosomes. Every single DNA molecule is one chromosome. So one chromosome means one DNA molecule. Each chromosome contains one DNA molecule associated with proteins. And that structure, which is DNA associated with proteins is called chromatin. Chromatin condenses Chromatin condenses to form discrete chromosomes as the cell prepare, prepares to divide. So the, when, when the cell is going to divide, first thing it does is uh, to pack its chromatin into, the, into smaller, into shorter and more dense structures, which are called chromatins. Uh, sorry, chromosomes. The nucleus is located with the uh, nucleolus is another structure which is seen in the nucleus. Uh, and nucleolus is the site of ribosomal RNA synthesis. So ribosomal RNA synthesis is done in the nucleus and where the ribosomal RNAs are synthesized, are called nucleus. Next, ribosomes. Ribosomes are protein factories. Those are the places or those are the organelles in which proteins are produced. Ribosomes are complexes made of ribosomal RNA and protein. So ribosomes are made of ribosomal RNA and protein. Ribosomes carry out protein synthesis in two locations, one in the cytosol, then we call them free ribosomes, or some of the ribosomes can be bound on endoplasmic reticulum. We call those ribosomes bound ribosomes. All right, this is a ribosome. And this is the molecular structure of ribosome. In the structure of ribosome, we see two kinds of molecules, RNA and proteins. And the ribosome can be found as free units in the cytoplasm, then we call them free ribosome, or they can be bound on the surface of endoplasmic reticulum. Then we call those ribosomes bound ribosomes. All right, in this picture, you can see ribosomes bound on endoplasmic reticulum. This is the structure of ribosome, which you can see in your uh, books. The next organelles are grouped as endomembrane system. Endomembrane system regulates protein traffic and performs metabolic functions in the cell. Endomembrane system consists of nuclear envelope, endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi apparatus, and lysosomes, and vacuoles, and plasma membrane. These components are either continuous or connected via transfer by vesicles. Now, these structures are grouped 
in endomembrane system. The first organelle of endomembrane system is endoplasmic reticulum. The endoplasmic reticulum accounts for more than half of the total membrane in many eukaryotic cells. ER, which means endoplasmic reticulum. Endoplasmic reticulum membrane is continuous with the nuclear envelope. There are two distinct regions in endoplasmic reticulum. Smooth endoplasmic reticulum, which is ER without ribosomes. Rough endoplasmic reticulum, which is or which has ribosomes bound on the surface. So there are two kinds of endoplasmic reticulum or in the endoplasmic reticulum, there are two regions, smooth endoplasmic reticulum, which is not bound by ribosomes and rough endoplasmic reticulum is this uh, area on which ribosomes are bound. Right. In this picture, you can see the endoplasmic reticulum and its rough and smooth parts. So what are the functions of smooth ER? The smooth ER synthesizes lipids. Lipid synthesis is done in smooth ER. Metabolizes carbohydrates. So carbohydrates are metabolized in smooth ER and detoxifies drugs and poisons. Detoxification reactions of drugs and poisons are done in smooth ER as well. Also in some cells, smooth ER stores calcium ions. And when it's necessary, they secrete those uh, calcium ions into cytoplasm. So these are the functions of smooth ER. The other kind of endoplasmic reticulum is Ralph endoplasmic reticulum. It has bound ribosomes. Those ribosomes secret, uh, sorry, uh, they secret the glycoproteins. Glycoproteins are proteins covalently bound to carbohydrates. The rough ER distributes transport vesicles, which are secretory proteins surrounded by membranes. The rough endoplasmic reticulum is also a membrane factory for the cell, which means the other cell membranes or the other membrane structures of the cell are produced by rough endoplasmic reticulum. Next is Golgi apparatus, our next organelle. Golgi apparatus is responsible for shipping and receiving the other molecules. <coughs> the Golgi apparatus consists of flattened membranous sacs called cisterna. The Golgi apparatus modifies the products of ER, which means the proteins are produced by ribosomes. They are processed in the endoplasmic reticulum. And then their second or third step process, processes are done in Golgi apparatus. Golgi manufacture, Golgi apparatus manufactures certain macromolecules and sorts and packages materials into transport vesicles. All right, in this picture, you can see the Golgi apparatus and uh, secretory vesicles produced by Golgi apparatus. 